Hey, what's going on guys? Left-Handed Shooter here for episode 4 of the Budget Hunter series. On this episode, I'm going to be covering uh, gear, tools, accessories, such as packs, uh, tracking poles, knives, things of that nature. Just kind of all the accessories outside of either A, your primary weapon, which is either going to be bow and arrow or rifle or, you know, muzzle loader, whichever one of those three, or a handgun depending on, you know, your state and everything. Um, outside of those main things and the stuff that I've already covered in the previous episodes, such as optics and uh, camouflage on a budget, today on this episode I'm going to be covering the essential gear that you would need for a hunt. Um, this is going to be primarily like a single day hunt, like morning to you know sunrise to sunset for one single day. Um, for extended stays, for extended hunts, you're going to have to have you know, multiple amounts of certain things. Um, unfortunately, I don't have all my gear in the room with me. I do have majority of it, so I'll be covering what I do have. Um, but yeah, so hopefully you guys have seen the previous three episodes. The first one's getting into archery on a budget. Second one is covering uh, optics, and the third one covers camo on a budget. Um, so for this one, like I said, I'll be covering the gear. I'll... Uh, post links to some of the items that I have in the description below and where you can find them at a relatively good price. Um, the first item that I want to go ahead and uh, jump into is going to be my pack. Now this pack is from uh, Alps or Alps Outdoors. It's the um, Pathfinder pack. Uh, it's a hunting pack designated as a hunting pack but this one's called the Pathfinder. Let me go ahead and grab it out of the way real quick. So, here it is. Pretty awesome pack. I'll move out of the way a little bit. Pretty awesome pack. So this one has a waist strap, clips in the front. You know, traditionally you can call this one just basically like a hunting fanny pack. Um, it's got an outside pouch. It's got a bottom pouch right in there and I'll be grabbing some of the gear out of there. It's also got some pretty cool features in here like this one has. I'm going to set it down real quick. Hopefully you guys can still see it in the screen. You can. All right, cool. So this one has an additional pouch. Uh, or not pouch. Actually, yes, it is a pouch. Sorry, this one is a pouch. It has an additional pouch where you can, you know, once you've quartered out your animal, if you're going for a deer, you know, whatever, um, other medium to large game, and you've already got your meat in um, a game bag, which I'll cover later, you throw it in here, this thing has little clips that actually clip to the top of the H harness. So this is the H harness that comes with it and it would clip on to the top two right here that you would see. Um, so it has a little compartment for that so that's super cool. Um, another thing that it has and I'll flip it over real quick so you guys can see that. So this pack is, you know, has an H harness, has a main fanny pack with the waist strap, you know, that clips together in the front. But this thing also expands into a full day pack. But one cool feature that it has between the top pouch that uh, on the front, or the front pouch, I should say, it has a little opening right here. So you can see sticking my hand all the way through. And through here, there's a small zipper. I don't know if you guys can see it all that well but there's a harness that comes out that basically holds the butt stock of your rifle obviously this looks a little bit uh, messed up or whatever but it holds the butt stock of your rifle and it clips it in straps it down secures the butt stock so basically your rifle would run through this opening between the front pouch the butt stock would go in here rifle would be sitting vertical on your back and to top it off, this not only is just a simple fanny pack with a couple of pouches, it opens up into a full day pack right here. And as you guys can see, these clips right here, this is where, if you've seen the video, I don't know if I added any photos or not, but in there I had my bow sitting in here, tucked in between this gap, and I had it stitched down with these straps. So rifle can go in here, goes in between here, you can tie it down, wrap it around, cinch it down, and clip it in. And then this opens up, 
you have a pocket right here for um, hydration pouch, Camelback. This one came with the Camelback. It was in there. I took it out. I had it. I just went hiking the other day, so I put it in one of my other packs. That's a little bit smaller, but hydration pouch goes in here. Has a hole through here, and you can run it up and over, and run the hose through these little D rings that are on the front of the pack. So yeah, this thing's pretty awesome. It collapsed collapses down to a fanny pack if you want to just carry the small pack at the bottom with whatever you need if it's going to be a short trip or if you're hunting a different type of game if you're going to be carrying additional accessories um, for my instance I usually carry my tripod for my binos and all that I'm going to need a little bit more space so I fully open it up clip it to the H harness <clears throat> and I have a full pack from there with water everything that I need so this is the Alps Outdoors uh, Pathfinder and the awesome thing about that, besides the fact that it has all these pockets, it's got a side pouch here. Me being left-handed, I range with my left hand. So here's where I usually carry my range finder. On the opposite side, inside of here, I'll carry lens cleaner, little lens cleaner for my binos. I carry just a regular pocket knife. And let's see if I have them in here. And my tags. The other thing I usually have in this pocket is my tripod bino mount. I'll clip it in there so I know where it's always at all the time. And then this one's a little bit weird. It's a little bit bulky. So on this pack, if you guys can see on the str front straps, it's got these two clips. And then on the actual waist strap, it's got two more clips like this. So let me go ahead and put the pack down. The cool thing with the uh, with the Alps uh, Alps Outdoors is for this pack specifically, and I believe it might work for two other packs. I think it's the Big Bear and the Little Bear, which are just strictly fanny packs. You have a bino pouch that you can clip into those four clips that I showed you guys. So right now they're clipped into each other. Sorry for all the mess for all the the straps. Excuse me, but you would basically essentially clip it onto the H harness and to the waist strap and it'll keep your binos pretty much chest level. This little pouch fits my uh, Crossfire binos from Vortex 10x42s. It fits them. It's a little bit snug because I added that little bino slicker freaking sun shield or light shield or whatever. But the cool thing is, is it comes with this little side pocket so I can put my wind checker in there and I just carry it like that. Wind checker sits like that. It's always accessible whenever I'm walking around. I cover some distance. I'll pull out the wind checker, check it, make sure I'm not going to get winded by an animal, you know, if I'm scouting or whatever. So super awesome, super convenient. I think this pouch, I think I got it for 15 bucks, 12 to 15 bucks, somewhere around there. Maybe it might have been 20, I'm not sure. But it clips onto the Pathfinder H harness and the waist strap, and it keeps it kind of like all in one uh, encompassing package. I am. However, we're going to look into getting just the Vortex Optics Bino strap or harness without the pack. Because usually if I need to get closer to an animal, I'm not going to lug all my gear with me. I'm going to stick to my bow, my quiver, and my binos or rangefinder. Probably a combination of both of those. So in order to do that, I would have to either clip this to my belt or, you know... Just pull the binos out and hang them around my neck, which can be kind of um, annoying to carry around and walk around and make sure they're not clanking on anything. So I might look into getting that, um, that bino harness from Vortex Optics. But this pack from Alps Outdoors, it's the Pathfinder pack. I got it from Amazon for, I think, 70 bucks. I think it was like $69.99. It normally retails for about $120. Um, I found it on there. I think the print, like I said, all my stuff is a uh, real tree uh, extra. So I don't know why the real tree extra one was sixty nine bucks, and the real tree max XT one or max one XT was one hundred and nineteen on Amazon. So I went with this one because it matches the camouflage that I have for everything else, anyways, and it was half the price. So that's the pack. That's you know, one of the main important things, there's an assortment of packs 
that you can go through. Um, do your research, find out what works. They have the full frame packs for just literally packing out gear. And if you're going to be doing extended hunts for, you know, five plus days where you can carry all your stuff, sleeping system, you know, camping tent, if you're carrying that, you know, just kind of like a little portable one man tent, uh, food and all that. But I'm not going to get into the details of that. Uh, the next thing I'm, um, since I've already covered the pack and the bino uh, pouch and the harnesses, Another thing that I've discovered that I probably should have invested in sometime previously is trekking pole. I have two of these. I only grab one. There's only the only real reason to have one of these in the demonstration or in the video. But um, I haven't used them for their intended purpose. And that's usually once you're packing out gear, you have that additional weight. Um, or once you're packing out an animal, sorry. You have that additional weight on your back. It can alleviate a lot of the strain on your knees and on your back by having a trekking pole. I got these from the local sportsman's warehouse about, you know, 10-15 minutes from my house. I got them for, I think they were $12.99. I checked the, the specs on them. It holds up to 90 pounds, so I can lean on it with about 90 pounds of my own weight. But I have two of them, so hopefully I'm not going to say it'll double my capacity for 180 pounds, but at least to alleviate on each hand some of the weight if I'm packing out an animal on my back so do some research there are some that can range all the way up to like 150 200 bucks for trekking poles I want a little bit more budget oriented um, because if I'm scouting I usually don't take them only when I'm for sure out hunting and they just strap to the outside of my pack somewhere where they're not gonna make too much noise and they weigh almost nothing I think each one of these came in at a pound and change so these things are super light these are from mountain smith these are mountain smith pinnacles so if you guys want to look them up amazon whatever i got to get these actually in store so i got two of those another thing if you're going to be out um scouting or even if you're glassing when you're out and about if you're going to stop take a break whatever or if you're going to be going for a long distance and you're actually going to be kind of sticking to a, either a ground blind or a kind of not really spot stock but just kind of sticking to one area and uh, uh, searching for animals that way little field stool I think I paid eight or nine bucks I think I paid eight bucks for this at again sportsman's warehouse they had them on sale and this one just opens up let me open it up real quick show you guys this one's rustic ridge camo top just enough to be a comfortable little seat for you know a temporary break if it's going to be going for, if i'm going to be going for a long distance or going to be gone for most of the day you know i'm willing to lug out the weight of this um pouch or not pouch sorry of the seat and i'm not going to fiddle with the um velcro right now so i'll just set it off to the side so you got pack bino pouch um, if you want to keep your rangefinder in a separate pouch, I just keep it in the side pocket of my pack. If you want to have it separately, you can look for that too. Uh, tracking poles, if you're planning on packing out um, meat and you don't have enough people, if it's either e, A, you by yourself, or B, you and a buddy, and you have you know a couple hundred pounds of meat to pack out, I highly recommend looking into getting some trekking poles. The next thing after that, I'm going to go with... Game bags. Um, these are who's the company? Kula Buck large uh, deer quarter bags, antimicrobial. They have like some. Um, they were vacuum sealed, bacteria free. I've kept them unopened until I've actually needed them. I don't know if these are actually reusable or not. I'm pretty sure they are. But let's see. They're safer for warm weather, eight times more resilient to bacteria than traditional bags. Uh, let's see. They sit in distilled water and a couple of other preservatives to keep it. But I don't know if they're 100% reusable. But yeah, I got these. This is a large pack. Sorry, my finger's right over the thing. Large, four bags, quartered. So it should get you a pretty decent size um, buck in here or dough, depending on where you're at. So definitely a must based on the animal that you're getting. If you're going to go for elk or larger game, 
then you might want to invest in two much larger bags that can fit the quarters of that animal. Um, and on to the field dressing and field care. I carry uh, two pairs of nitrile gloves. If I'm going out with somebody else, I'll double that and take four pairs. Um, paracord. This one I think is like 30 feet of some 550 cord, paracord, whatever you want to call it. I usually carry about 30 to 50 feet, and that's if you got to hang up an animal, if you got to hang up the quarters, whatever, if you need a quick fix of something. You have your uh, paracord, cut a piece, tie it off, save your gear, whatever. Um, I carry a little pack of waterproof matches, just a tiny little thing, nothing major. Uh, let's see what else I have in here. Um, I need to re-up this amount, but carry electrical tape. It's pretty good um, for just whatever random fixes. You get a cut or something, cut a piece of cloth, put it over the cut, tape it on there, and keep trucking. Um, these, or this is my knife that I use. The other one was just a regular uh, SOG pocket knife. It's super sharp, super awesome. But I have this replaceable blade, Havilon Peranta. Um, super sharp surgical steel, stainless steel blades. The cool thing about the Havilon, and this is what kind of convinced me on it, they're a little bit pricey up front. I think I paid like 34 or 36 bucks, and it came with like a pack of like either three or a dozen blades. They come in really weird numbers. It's either three or a dozen. There's no, no in between. But let me see if I can get them open. Actually, you might be able to see them in there. Right in there, the front blades that I have in here. I have two additional replacements to this one for the regular blade, but then I also have hook blades and the one thing I'm looking into purchasing is going to be the saw blades so it basically ends up being an all-in-one knife because it has the regular skinning skinny blade and then it has gut hooks and you can get the saw blade for it all replaceable I carry the little tool to you know pop the blades off pop new ones on so that's that knife like I said a little pricey up front but it's a hundred percent worth it let me see what else I have in here. Um, headlamps. Headlamps is another big, big must. Um, I carry this one. Usually I don't put the batteries in it until the day before, the night before, or I'll carry it separately. If I'm doing an early morning um, drive out to where I'm gonna be hunting, I'll throw the batteries in the night before. That way if I'm doing anything in the dark when I get to where I'm gonna be hunting, I already have the batteries in. If you're going to be doing just a single day hunt and you actually end up getting an animal down, maybe the batteries that are in there will be enough, but I always carry spares. So always carry a second set of batteries for it. So headlamps are super important. I don't know what settings this one has. I think this one has bright, low, and then strobe. I don't know why I would need strobe, but I don't know, maybe for SOS, man down, whatever. All right, let's see what else I have in here. Oh yeah, this is the this is the little tool for the Havilon. You pop it open, pop the blade in there. It tells you where to press and what it does when you press it. It pops the blade up and you can slide it off, put a new blade on, and continue with what you're doing. So it weighs nearly nothing. That's another purpose for having this little Havilon. It comes in its own little pouch, but I just keep it in there like this. It does everything that would be covered normally by multiple knives, tools, etc. I have one, I carry extra blades, I put it all in one pouch, and it's all in one location. So, And that's what the whole purpose of my SOG um, knife is, in case something happens to this one, where I can't continue what I'm doing, I can at least have that backup knife. So if you haven't picked up already, having a second, um, second set or second pair of something goes a long way. Another thing that I like to carry is um, chem lights. Sorry, military jargon. Um, glow sticks. These uh, these two are green. And then this one's just a red light that's replaceable. So I don't know if you guys can see that. Red light. Um, red light's good for nighttime movement. If you're marking anything, uh, especially in campsites. 
having glow sticks with you, break them, hang them up in branches around your campsite in case people are either traversing through that area or you're right off a beaten path and you don't want anybody driving in through your camp and accidentally running and breaking into any of your gear or anything like that, set up a perimeter with these to at least kind of let people know. Or also if you're moving in a group, crack one of these, strap it to the back of your backpack so someone has a line of sight of where you're moving and can see that little uh, glow in the distance. Um, oh, actually, as a matter of fact, sorry for the long video, guys, but it's a little bit extra to cover on this episode. But here's my batteries for my headlamp, my second set. Um, another thing I carry that I don't have in here, I put it in my bag when we went hiking, is a small little self-made uh, first aid kit. It's super important that you guys have something like that, whether it's, you know, a sprain, a rolled ankle, you know... You fall and, you know, at least something to sustain the basic injuries that you can get until you can get stabilized and get out of there and get treated with uh, further medical attention. But I carry um, bandages, gauze. I have a tourniquet for worst case scenario. Um, and I have trauma shears. And the purpose for the trauma shears is it'll cut through damn near any material of clothing without any issues to include denim. Um, so I carry those anytime I'm out with somebody, I always say, Hey, on my pack, on my left side, uh, pouch, there's a tourniquet, there's trauma shears, and there's additional glow sticks. Um, and then obviously the remainder of the glow sticks and my first aid kit is actually inside of the pack, but it's just a small pouch, carries a tourniquet, carries a trauma shears for whatever I might need. Um... I know this is going to sound a little bit ridiculous, but depending on what state you're in, you might need a pen. Um, I carry this pen because here in Arizona, the tags that you fill out aren't just marking the notches like some states do in the West, where you cut out the notch for the month and the day, and your tag is filled and you just tape it to the animal. In Arizona, you actually have to fill out the remainder of the information, like time, date, location, and then... It's a self-adhesing tag that you can put around the antler, around the leg, whatever. It gives you a bunch of different options of where you can stick it to. So from now on, I carry that pen, and yes, that's electrical tape on the end. Um, that's kind of it for this gear. It's packs, kind of covering basic essentials. Um, the one thing I didn't cover is food. Um, remember, at the end of the day, you guys want to keep your weight down and keep your budget down. Some of these items were a little bit pricier, but that's just the route that I went. You guys can do a little bit of research and find out what uh, cheaper alternatives you have based off of what your needs are. Um, the biggest thing I hope you guys are taking away from this series of episodes is do your research. Find out what works in your area. Find out what items you can get on a budget. Um, don't necessarily go off of my prices. I'm just kind of going on the lower end of things. I know some of my items are a little bit pricier than others, but it still comes down to a relatively low end scale for majority of my items across the board. Um, especially like the trekking poles. You can get a pair of trekking poles for $12.99 or not a pair, sorry, a single one for $12.99. So I think I paid $26 and change for the two trekking poles where they range all the way up to $200. So, you know, thing to consider, how much do they weigh and how much are they? But, um, let's see what else. Um, if I haven't already mentioned this before in the previous episodes, I would use my phone, but I'm filming on it. But one of the apps that I use and I absolutely love, and those guys are super awesome, is the Onyx Hunt app. It's GPS uh, app. And it has just unlimited features. You can drop waypoints. You can drop, you know, markings of different sorts. Um, I've used it tremendously. You can plan out routes. You can um, isolate an area of the map that you're going to be hunting in, say, you know, three, four days in advance or however much longer. You can scan over the screen on a certain area and click download as off-grid. And basically what it'll do it'll download that map you know I think it's I think it's 5 10 or like 25 square miles or something like that so it'll show the circle size of the map you can click on that 
download it off grid so whenever you don't have reception you could still pull up your map your phone works as a GPS regardless of where you are it's always gonna work as a GPS even with no uh, cell service so you can go on the app click off grid basically it goes offline and you click the map that you're gonna be doing it'll load the map and it'll actually show your location all your waypoints that you have added all your trails any markings that you have on there any information is still on that map and 100% usable offline so I highly recommend getting it you know you can download it for free and then you can upgrade to you know the membership I think I pay like $20 a year the first year that I got it um, the guys are super awesome super awesome support um, I left an honest review for um, on their Instagram I you know I told them I was like hey you guys have been awesome in my you know endeavors getting into the hunting world and just for having an honest testimonial and reaching out to them and you know thanking them for that service that they provide through the app they went ahead and sent me a free hat uh, I'm not saying they're going to do that for everybody. I just went out of my way to kind of acknowledge the effort that they put into this app. Um, another thing, you don't need to go out and get a fancy GPS. Your phone will work wonders, especially with the Onyx Hunt app. Um, but you can map out your stuff, download stuff to your phone. And the only thing is if you're going to be using your phone that much, I 100% recommend buying those little external battery packs charging it before and carrying it in your pack i do i carry a small one that basically if my phone gets down to you know below 10 percent or almost off i can plug in that little additional battery pack and if i don't use my phone for you know 20 30 minutes it'll get it up a good way and it'll actually do a full recharge if i'm not constantly using my phone so if you're going to use your phone for things buy an additional battery pack that's 100% recommended. Um, I'm more than likely, I know this episode is running long, but I'm more than likely going to end up doing a part two with anything that I did not cover in this episode. Or I might actually just split this episode into two. It's going to be kind of hard because there's a lot of information on here. But I'll probably definitely be doing a part two. And I believe for episode five, I'm going to be doing a rifle on a budget. Um, it's going to be a simple build. It's going to be one of the ones that I actually already own. I'm not going to go out and buy a new rifle because I don't think my wife would like that. Um, so yeah, episode five is going to be covering, you know, a budget rifle build to hunt different types of game. And I'll cover, you know, some calibers and, you know, what would be ideal for someone getting into it on a budget that can only afford to have one rifle designated for all types of game. So I'll be covering that. Um, that's all I got for you guys. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, um, go ahead and leave them in the comment box below. And as always, don't forget to uh, like, comment, and subscribe to the channel so you guys can continue to get this, uh, these videos from me. And maybe in the near future, I'll be having some guests on the video. So that's all I got for you guys. Take it easy. And again, have any questions, comments, I love interacting with you guys. So go ahead and leave them in the comments box below.